big uh, uh, meadow many, many years ago, somewhere around 1971. I would like for us to think about an attitude that my granddaughter is six years old and Alan and Mary is her godparents and she spent some time in the home with uh, Brother Goody and Sister Betty, a lot of time. And uh, when my daughter told her that Sister Betty had passed away and had gone to be with Jesus, Beth said she cried and she cried and she cried. And then all of a sudden she stopped crying and she said to her mother, It'll be all right. Man and Papa Barry will take care of Sister Betty, or Granny, she called her. And uh, I thought this morning, uh, there's one greater than them that's taking care of her today. And let us think not about the sadness of losing her. We've all lost loved ones that we mourned over. But maybe we can look at it as a celebration of a life that was lived for God for her family and accept it in that part and see that God is still God. Betty Jean Cruz was 82 years old. She went home to be with the Lord on October 30th of this year. She was born in Wynn St. Mary and lived in Jacksonville most of her life. Uh, Sister Betty was a member of the Cornerstone Pentecostal Church her survivors included her husband, Reverend Willie Cruz, three sons, Daniel being the oldest, uh, Annie, uh, the next one, and Alan. Uh, Alan's married to Mary, and uh, uh, we call him Dylan. Married to June, and uh, Alan is, uh, Daniel is married to Vicky. Amen. She had thir uh, eight grandchildren, 13 great-grandchildren, and a sister, Eva Jeanette Cruz. I was trying to figure out the best way to do a tribute to her. And Sister Betty, most of us know, was a poet. If you, if you were around her very long, I'm sure there's a poem somewhere or another, stuck in a drawer somewhere or another, that she wrote about you. And uh, she was such a, a, a talented lady with uh, writing different things. And she was very talented in her music. And, um, she could sing very well. Uh, and I tried to think about how I could put this the best way to honor her and to honor Christ. And so I decided that maybe I want to go to a poet and find out. And I turned over the Proverbs chapter 31. You probably heard it said many times. But I I, I did something out of the ordinary. I, I used a paraphrase to put it that I thought might be of benefit. And it says this, If you can find a truly good wife, she is worth more than precious gems. Her husband can trust her, and she will richly satisfy his needs. I could comment on all this, but I, I don't know. I'll just let you kind of translate it into your own lives and your own thoughts. She will not hinder him, but help him all of her life. And I ask the question, how does she do this? <laughs> Sister Betty fit in with God's plan for her husband. When others refused to listen when she talked to them about the Lord, they were convicted by her respectful and pure behavior. Her godly life spoke to them more effectively than any word. She was not concerned about the outward beauty that depends on jewelry and beautiful clothes or hair arrangement. She was beautiful inside, in her heart. 
with the lasting charm of a gentle and quiet spirit that is so precious to God. That kind of deep beauty was seen in the saintly women of old who trusted God and fitted in with their husbands' plans. I think we can all say that she fitted in with Brother Willie's plans and God's plan for him. And it speaks of an industrious woman here. And I think it would be good for a generation that is now. One generation passes on to another. And what she passed on to us was, it says she finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She stayed busy. She buys imported foods brought by ships from distant ports. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plans the day. She goes out to inspect the field and buys it, and with her own hands she plants a vineyard. Sister Betty always found something to do. She was always busy with the things of God and the things of her family. What a wonderful type of person that is. Say so she's energetic, a hard worker, and watches for bargains. <laughs> I knew that would get it. <laughs> she works far into the night, taking care of that family. Sometimes I ask my wife, are you ever coming? I'm sure that Sister Betty was that type of woman that looked out for her family. And whatever their needs was, she made sure that it was met before she went to bed. She sews for the poor and generously helps those in need. She has no fear of winter for her household, for she has made warm clothes for all of them. Her husband is well known. For he sits in the council chamber with the other church leaders. Her life that she lived, the moderation that she lived in life, the sobriety that was upon her in her life spoke well of her husband. It made him look good. That's a wonderful thing in the life of a woman. She makes velvet linen garments to sell to the merchants. And this is her testimony. She is a woman of strength and dignity and has no fear of old age. When she speaks her words are wise and kindness is the rule for everything she says. She watches carefully all that goes on throughout her household and is never lazy. Her children stand and bless her. So does her husband. He praises her with these words. There are many fine women in the world, but you are the best of them all. You think so? I, I said to Alan when he asked me to do this, I said, Alan, how do you separate them? How do you separate two people that have become one? They're so entwined in each other's life where you see one, you see the other. What one is doing, the other is doing. I just didn't know hardly how to separate them. Charm can be deceptive and beauty doesn't last. But a woman who fears and reverences God shall be greatly Praise. Praise her for the many fine things she does. These good deeds of hers shall bring her honor and recognition from the people of God. And those who see her in the marketplace shall acknowledge her. This was the type of woman that lays before us today. What a happy person I knew. I, I, she used to sit 
on the side of it. From time to time I would preach and she always cried. And I used to think, am I that bad? <laughs> but it wasn't that. She just enjoyed the blessings and the preaching of God's word. What a, what a wonderful person she was. You very seldom heard her speak up in church. She'd sit in a quiet way and raise her hands and let the blessings of God flow upon her life. And once in a while you would hear her sometimes say, Willie, can I say something? <laughs> or Brother Lloyd, can I say something? And she always had good words to say. I never heard her complaining honestly. I, I, I was his associate pastor for five years and around him all these years. I never heard her complain. And she always had something good when it came time for dinner on the ground. I used to tell her, Sister Betty, you ought to take somebody and teach them how to make chicken and dumplings. It's a dying art. But she always had plenty. She never came to the church dinner without a full basket. And I don't know that I've ever seen her depressed, discouraged. It seemed that God had put something in her that lifted other folks up. I'm glad to have known these people. They've been an inspiration to my life over the years. I've had many people tell me, you preach just like Willie Cruz. I said, well, my God, I, I was with him so many years. I would have got something from him. <laughs> but these are the type of people that I'm glad God placed in my life. Her gentleness, her kindness, the fruits of the Spirit flowed from her life. And today, I give her honor. And I praise her for the life she lived before me, before my wife and my children, and now my grandchildren. You cannot imagine the love that a six-year-old girl has for those two people. It's just amazing to me when she talked to me about uh, Granny and Papa Cruz. And she's an inspiration to my grandchildren. What a day, folks. What a day we are in. We need people that can leave a heritage to another generation. And I tell you, with all of my heart, she left something behind that we work to emulate. And God bless you.